I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying anything is true. No, I'm speaking that. This is just what if it were true. And the things that I speak about are um, it is are things that I've what I've come to understand or it's the it's the assumption or the presumption of all of the sort of research that I've done in relation to the grammatical standing of documents, in relation to what is English, the English text, and in relation to what the um, the debased Latin text that they're using on court documents, banking contracts, bank notes, etc., which is no part of the English language that we can find at all. <laughs> um, and in fact, well, in the facts that we can find, and according to the um, Chicago Manual of Styles, the all uppercase text is, is what I've been harping on about. The all uppercase text is no part of the English language. It's found in foreign languages. So the whole guts of what I'm trying to say is that if you have a document that has two languages on the document, then there's no correspondence between the two languages. And if the document makes no sense, if you separate the two languages, then the document itself is really saying nothing at all. Um, people say the document's a fraud. No, it's not a fraud. There's no document as a, fraud, as a fraud because the document is what it is. The fraud is in what someone does with the fraud, such as passing it off as something that it is not. But today I'm just going to enlighten you or give you a scenario of what the hidden side of the all uppercase text, which is called D-based Latin, which I call D-based Latin. It's known as um, in the Black's Law Dictionary as Dog Latin, which is the all uppercase Latin style of text constructed under the grammatical rules of English, which can't be. So in the Black's Law Dictionary, they've given it a name, which is called Dog Latin. And, um, and you know, that sort of, that kind of, that, that took me a, a long time because in all my quest of finding out what the all uppercase text was, because magistrates would shut, would close down a court case uh, and wipe it, wipe it off the record before they will answer the question, what styles manual did you use to construct the document that you're passing off as a charge? What styles manual did you use and what is the all uppercase text? I cannot find it in the Oxford Manual of Styles. Um, however, it does appear in the Chicago Manual of Styles uh, in foreign languages as a sign language, sign, to sign a document, sign language, which is starting to make sense. In um, the, the, uh, the Steiner schools that um, some people are aware of, it's a different type of a teaching. They've conformed more to the um, to the government schooling system these days in Australia, simply probably to get funding uh, to uh, to get the, the government to fund their their school. So their curriculum has had to follow more closely to the standard of the the state, the so-called state, in order to get the money. But um, what I did notice, and I think they may still be doing this, is the way they uh, get the children because they tend to have the first lot of uh, the first few years of schooling deals very little in English and writing it all deals in symbolism art and uh, developing the skills of, of art and music which is probably which is not a bad thing at all um, and then when they're ready they bring them more into the, um, the academic side of things which is just a different sort of a training that school is a German-based school too. You've got to remember that. Um, that the that the other thing I've found is that um, in the twelve around the twelve thirty, a Curtius is the one that um, that created the new Corpus Juris, the modern version of the Corpus Juris that we are under today. It's the 
it is the modern legal system uh, created in the Hohenstaufen reign by Acursius, which was a jurist, and he basically um, perfected the Justinian corpus juris into a modern day standard by using surnames to offer people the ability to act to remain in common law or to come over into the uh, administrative uh, maritime law system. And most people today believe they have a surname and they've come across their, un they've sort of unwittingly, I say they've been <laughs> sold a lemon, but, but um, it's just some people do fine as the administrators and other people are raped and plundered. The countries are often, in my opinion, raped and plundered by it because most of the people have been deceived into acting as the administrator while under the belief that they are the um, they are the, the national of their government or the national of their land and that they are living on the lands that they feel that they own. But when you become a resident or a citizen of a foreign administrator, you are legally a resident, which is someone that lives on land that they do not own. Or they become the traditional owners, which means, the word tradition means one who has sold or given away their lands. And of course, in Australians' case, and the original Australians that were here prior to the, the white settlement, uh, if they call themselves traditional, well then they have jumped from the land up onto their ships in dry dock, their foreign corporate ships, where they may be getting some sort of a benefit out of it. And that's why they've done it. Well, they may need to do it just to survive. But what if when you're looking at the all uppercase text. So when you see a word written in all uppercase text, which is the sort of language that is used by um, the legal ease system, what if it was what they call it a hieroglyphic text? They actually call this all uppercase letters uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs. It's hieroglyphic text. It's a it's an illustrative text it's not descriptive these this is descriptive text here whereas this written in all uppercase is sign or pictures or shapes and that's where the shape shifting comes in too if you if you are the account holder of four or five different accounts you can shape shift from each account to each account because the wording on the the document that you thought were, were words were actually signs shapes pictures, illustrative text, even though it may have read Commonwealth of Australia and you thought you were a part of Commonwealth of Australia, in reality or, or legally, if it's written in all uppercase text like it is uh, registered on the United States Securities Exchange Commission uh, as, a, as a company or organisation, uh, it's written in all uppercase text, which is a picture, a shape, an illustration a copyrightable symbol, symbolism, engraved images, the things that we we'll want to stay away from by, by God. God means master. That's the, um, the ma uh, God, the, the synonym to God is master. But what I've come to realize is that even from the Steiner School, when they were teaching children the alphabet to get them in the memory they the, the ones that stuck out really a lot was things like C which is the shape of cove calm uh, the, the words that relate to calm or cove or creditor which is peaceful which is a peaceful place is the shape of what it is um, I think there was another with um, with uh, water, here we go down here. The W is the shape of water. So W is water because it's shaped like water. And also M for mountain because they are the mountains. So they were teaching children to look at the letter and re relate it to a, an actual symbol, a hieroglyph of something, 
which when you think of water, you can remember the water shape, it's easy because it's just like water. And same with the mountains. And from this, I started to look at, is there a system in the alphabet, in the all uppercase text, that uh, is hidden when they, like the word sign, S-I-G-N, um, which I'll probably get into later, just to, to see or to show some of the hidden meanings when you construct a word in all uppercase text, which is a hieroglyphic text. The letters and the meaning of each letter paints quite a big picture, a big symbol of what that word may mean. We just see the word and think, well, we'll go to the English dictionary and have a look what the word means, sign or whatever it is. But when you look at the hieroglyphic meaning, which is the hidden text that no one has really taught anyone about, then some of these words may show in more detail what you're looking at. I'm going to run through A. What if A stood for administration? A. And you, you can see the A. It's the, the triangle cut across the top like the one dollar bill on the United States with the I inside the top little, little half, which means the hierarchy of the pyramid system scheme are the ones that um, know the re reality and all the ones underneath the A are the ones that are being administrated. A. Now what I'm also doing is if you keep this in mind as you're going through then we can use this code of things to work out some the, of the meanings to work out the meanings of some of the words that they're actually using and, and it's quite surprising. B. Babylon. It's got the two the two domes when set up in in uh, laid down flat which is um, debtor and creditor. And that's what Babylon's all about. It's the Bible that you get in the court is the manual of Babylon. So if you know the Bible, you'll know how Babylon works. And, um, the, and when you read the manual, you know the manual of, of your car, your, mo your boat or your engine. You, you go through the manual, you will understand the do's and don'ts of uh, dealing with that automobile or that motorbike or that boat or the engine whatever you're dealing with or anything but as long as you read the manual and you will also notice that the manual says if you void if you if you, if you don't um, go by the manual you will void warranty and this is something that I've always said about the English language if you're going to use a language in a court document and you don't follow the manual that's why I asked the magistrates well what manual did you use so that I know uh, if you've avoided the warranty because if, if you've used a, a language and you're avoiding the warranty then all your warrants that you've assumed are warrants are worth nothing it's wiped the charge out from the very beginning does the charge exist did you construct the charge in according to the rules and regulations of the warranty or of the manual of that language <laughs> and a lot of the times no they did not which voids the warrant voids the warranty voids the charge it's gone see you later it's a little bit deeper than that because you've got to know who you are first but when you start to understand this you might start to recognize why the christian name and the state name or why the christian name is so important b Babylon. c for calm creditor a cove where the calm water is in there so it's a symbol of calm the creditor of a trust. The D is the one dome, one of the Babylon domes, debtor and creditor in Babylon. B's got two domes, but uh, D, Dominion, has got the one dome, the debtor. E, equity. This is really strange because you've got one stroke, you've got three marks, which is a trust is debtor, creditor, and administrator. It's a bit like Noah's Ark, A R K, which is the roof over livestock. It's strange that. And another really strange thing about Noah's Ark is that there were three decks on Noah's Ark. The debtor, the creditor, and the administrator. Same with the 
animals. He bought the debtor unclean and he bought the creditor, which was clean. Clean animals and unclean. Isn't it? Uh, unclean animals in the dictionaries means corrupt. So when you think about debtor and creditor, think about the Christian name, John Henry, as the creditor, and then John Henry Doe. So when the police ask you for your name, you'd say John Henry Doe. Well, that's the corruption of the creditor name because your name is only John Henry. That's the Christian name that you're given to you by Christ. But then you turned around and said, no, my name's John Henry Doe, which is the incorporation of the, of the, um, the, the family name and the Christian name. The minute you've incorporated, you've created a corporation, incorporation, which is under the rules of the Vatican, which is under the rules of the debtors, which is the corruption. So they administer the lost people that are corrupt, that don't know their own name. <laughs> so equity is very important. So there's three strokes in, an, in a symbolic E, or all uppercase E. But F has two strokes. And that's very important because F is for fraud. F is, uh, or the two strokes, is like having a trust system where there are debtor, creditor and administrator but one of, one of them is missing. But if you take one element out of it, the debtor, creditor, and um, administrator system, then the trust is no longer a trust. It's just an agreement between two parties. But if you have an office of debtor, an office of creditor, and an office of administration, and then take one of the parties outside of the office, then the actual um, the actual trust exists in a form or a dead form of an office form, an official form, but the people, one of the people, one of the, um, the subject matters has been removed, which creates a trust but in fraud because it's a trust of the office of debtor, creditor and administrator, only housing the administrator who's the magistrate and the debtor, the creditor, is only he's out, he's got a choice of going from credit or debtor, uh, debit, credit, credit or debtor, and in that, that is what F, fraud, and notice fraud, fraud, fiend, fake, all the the fake words, all the f f fucked, <laughs> um, the the words that the the words that are are not right start with. Um, even like mail, it's been franked. I wonder why. Because even on mail, it's got written there, um, postage paid. But because the postage is paid has been written in the debased language, has it been paid? It's only, or is the debased language where it says on, a, on mail, postage paid, because it's written in debased Latin, is it telling you that the postage has not been paid? <laughs> See? It, if you know... If you know your grammar, then you can see that everything is in full disclosure. Even though you read it wrong, if you knew your grammar, you would read it correctly. G, which is like a C with a small T in it, like this, oh, G, which is the governance, which is governance, ca, ca, um, Governance of the calm water. Governance, G, for governing, which is really the T is, is the treasury in with the C, with the calm, the T and the C, treasury with the calm, the governance. So true, proper governance is, gay, all, all the G words are like that. H, hierarchy. And when you think about even the H, if you think of the old Egyptian um, some of their systems where they've got the two the two pillars they walk into a into the the buildings as the two pillars on each side which is the hierarchy which is the the strength holding up the system and that's why it's shaped like an h an i me one one you i j that's a strange one the joker j is the joker the jack all the joker words um, and a J is made up of a T which is a treasury and at the bottom 
is a little loop, which is a U, which is the underworld. So the Joker is the treasury that is with the underworld or with the Joker. The treasury with the underworld, which is a joke. That's why it's the Joker. The K is, is funny because it's like a cross cut in half with a line down the, the middle of it. K is kill. Um, and killed on the cross. And it's, it's strange because we'll go to, over to, to the cross. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that and I'll explain what's going on there. L. Lucifer. Illusion. It's the... It's the... It's the deception. It's, a, it's about the deceiving of... That's what Lucifer does. He's, he's the one that deceives. And uh, tricks. Makes things not look like it should. <laughs> M, of course. Mountain. And M would be the dealing with the mountains and valleys. So the mountains direct the valleys. Wherever the, the mountains are, the valleys where the water flows, where the current currency, you know, the, um, the flow of energy flows in the valleys, which are the banks. And the direction of the valleys is really where the mountains are because water can only flow through the valleys. So we've got mountain, and, we'll, and I'll just to look at that, Vatican Valley, you see that? The Vatican is the World Bank. It controls the flow of water, the Holy Sea. That's why the V, you probably see when a lot of people are in war, victory, but what it was really meaning, or what may be, is the Vatican has won, V. He controls the underworld, he controls the banks. The, um, the banking system, the Rothschild banking system, if that's who is serving as the um, as the emperors of Rome today. Are they, are they the Rothschilds? Are they the head of Babylon? N is neutral, which is mountain like that and valley joined together. Neutral, all the neutral, nothing. Um, no, you know, all the, the N words it's got to do with this, which is mountain and valley the mountain and valley O is the office which is a circle, that's why when I draw those um, these things, these things here I use that as the office, the office of uh, administration, the office of uh, creditor, and the office of debtor. But of course, like I say in the fraud, if we are in the debtor and we are not with the creditor, not very good with my left hand, with, with, not with the creditor, if we are just here, and the office of creditor is empty. But this trust that is being administrated by this Vatican here, the trust itself in the world of the dead is still in existence. It's still operating, even though we're not there. And that's where the fraud comes into it. Fraud. P, that's plebeian. And it's strange because 400 um, BC, they had a, a, a system which was the Libor, the god of the, the wine god of Libor, a Roman god of Libor, and uh, they operated a trust law governing system, which was the sa same today, which is really odd because they had the um, this was called the patrician and this was called the plebeian. The creditor was the patrician, the debtor was the plebeian, and Libor, who was the who was the terms and conditions of the of the trust, that was the the um, you could say um, the constitution the administration is the constitution what it's the written contract and of course the administrator who is the magistrates who are really the captains they are on top of this administration ship system and they make sure that everyone follows the rules 
of that ship. And of course, the Libor Code, the God of Libor, that had a system of rules and regulations. And one was the creditor and one was the debtor, patrician and the plebeian. And it's strange today that they've got the, um, the plebeian, they have the plebiscites. And if you vote in a plebiscite, then what you're saying is when you walk into the polling booth and you class yourself as the debtor or the plebeian, or the one that um, has the power to vote inside the system, you are the plebeian, the pleb, the, the debtor of the system. You are not the patrician. That was around 400 BC. And it's got its way into the governing system of today, which, just, as I said, goes to show these systems are not new. These go back um, a long time. Sometimes if you, to, in order to know the future, you have to understand the past because what's happening in the past, if you go back far enough, then, then you can um, get the timeline and you can see what's going to happen into the future and you can counteract this future as well. But, well, just by knowing what's going to happen. The office, the P, the plebeian. The Q is, is strange because, I mean, the minute you question something, this office, they are sealed. And when you get into an office, it's sealed. But the minute you question it, it's a line, which is a break on the office. So when you walk into the, uh, the courts and everything like that, like I did, I walked in quite happily because, um, <laughs> because when the police try and put you in a court, if you don't turn up, they'll come around and punch the, sh the crap out of you. And that's what they did to me. Then they threaten you because they're terrorists. The, the police that operate these systems, if the system is a fraud, it's all right if it's, it's not a fraud, then we, we are willing to do this. But when we're being forced into a fraud uh, by way of uh, terrorism and um, threats, of, which is extortion, when those state police or Queensland police or, or any, form of, um, any form of state police comes around and threatens you, if you don't act as the debtor and they threaten you, well then but even that is a violation of the system. I think it's Article 1 of the Unidroid Treaty of Rome that um, it even says that this system, the Rome, the, the Unidroid uh, Rome Statute, is uh, voluntary. It must be voluntary. But if you don't know what's going on, you'll have um, volunteered unwittingly. And then when you're in the system as a debtor, and then the police come around and bash the crap out of you, or take your lands, take your car, or do all these things to you, you'll say, but I have rights. Well, no, you don't have rights. The thing is, you just didn't know how you lost your rights, because this is a secret system, as you can start to see. Things not adding up or if, if you don't know the codes then you know <laughs> you got to know the code you got to know what's going on you got to work it out you got to see how they're doing this uh, and to be honest I, I think it's time to to expose it because in in my case I, I went to them to explain that you, you guys are in trouble you're doing something terribly wrong but um, but I got threatened, my family was threatened. I was thrown in, in the watch house many times. I was, I was so-called charged. And that'll, I'll do another segment on about what happened in that court case. Because uh, there were no charges. There were no charges. Because and even when I asked the magistrate, I said, can you read out the charges? He knew darn well he was not gonna read the charges out. Because he knew, I knew, that they were debased which means criminal and corrupted. And if he had spoken, then he would have been a part of it. He would have been dethroned immediately from that. So what they did with me is they wiped out all the charges and basically dumped the charges back onto the debtor. They tried to make me think I was, they tried to, they assumed that I was a debtor, but I had the paperwork and the evidence that I was the creditor and they couldn't pin the debt onto me because I wasn't in the house of the debtors. I was in the house of the creditors, which is a political stand. And a political stand is in all the constitutions, cannot be interfered with. You see that? So all the charges, the magistrate had to mitigate all the charges to nothing. And any charge that was left,
had to fall back onto the police and the administrator, which is the magistrate. So that's question, putting a break in the office. As soon as you break the office, you expose the office to the F, which is the fraud. <laughs> Come down to R. R is Rome. Rome owns this. The Vatican owns it. Home to Rome. Home is really just the, the, to become the creditor of the system. The Vatican operates it. This is the system of the dead that Christ warned us in and when he was around a couple of thousand years ago it's in the Bible that the New Testament is really the new covenant, the new covenant, the new contract. The old co contract set up here, the new contract is the New Testament which is a new contract and what Christ did in this testament, in this contract, this testament is warned us of course we've always got the choice but he warned us that there are two standings and if you eat from the tree of knowledge then you will surely die and if you find your name written in all uppercase or you're holding any information that you're you're holding a name that you th think is a name such as a driver license or um, passport or legal title of anything and you see a name there in uppercase then which is that contains your surname or your the so-called last name written in in D base Latin all uppercase text then uh, you've agreed to enter into the world of the dead you are dead even over here in the creditor um, the name of this is the Christian name written in the dead language all uppercase so this is also dead as well the Christian is dead but what they say in this side, the creditor side, is that it already has a debtor. So you are left out as the director of it, which is like Christ said, um, if you eat from the tree of knowledge, you will die. But the tree of life gives you life or gives you the ability to direct the trust in a dead estate. You still have a dead name. Your Christian name in all uppercase is dead. But that name has a trustee, which is the Registrar General. And he is the one that holds it. And he represents the Vatican. He represents Rome. So if you understand the system, Rome and the Vatican is in one way there to protect and uphold the people. It serves the people. So Rome is not good or bad. Rome has two... It's a bit like Christ in that when he was around, he went in there and bashed the shit, uh, bashed the, the bankers and um, with the big stick. <laughs> because Christ had two jobs, was to keep the debtors, the bankers in line, but also to serve the living. The Vatican, who claims to be the, um, the vicar of Christ, which is the stand-in of Christ, then he has to operate the same system. He he becomes the basher of the banks and any of the subdivisions of the banks. So if you hold a bank account, then you are an account holder of the bank, which is a trustee. So you step out of line and you will be bashed. So the only way to get out of that is you can't have bank accounts. <laughs> it's going to be awkward, isn't it? <laughs> but I don't have bank accounts. Um, and you get used to it. You, you can survive. Um, it's life. <laughs> you don't. You don't need a lot of that stuff. I can tell you that. S, the snake. We got Rome, which is the the copyright owner of this system. Rome also owns these symbols. That's Rome. That belongs to Rome. S is the snake. It just looks like a snake. Snake. You'll probably know the snake. He's in the Garden of Eden. He's the one that came down and did all the. Um, the conning with Adam and Eve and the snake and he <laughs> he got Eve to eat the the apple which is really um, um, offered Eve the credit card <laughs> and Eve took it and, and then Adam was, <laughs> Adam was left with the debt 
That's just personal stuff. But that's what the snake is, the snake in the garden. It's the one that, they're the ones that will trick you. They're the ones you've got to watch for. They're the ones that will be the ones you, car, sales, car salesman is a snake. You know, you, that's, they're not all snakes. A lot of people want to do the right thing by you. But in general, that's what the snake is. The one that comes in and sells you the lemon, sells you a fraud over here and the Vatican has sort of done that sold you a fraud the T is the treasury the trust like a T you know like a ledger a debtor and creditor and, um, people working in administration will sort of understand that symbol you the underworld which is the world of the dead which is below the surface the um, under the ledger when you get a mail um, the mail is called a ledger. The, the articles you get in the mail um, are a two to one ratio, which is the same ratio as the ledger that on a, sits on a grave, the two to one ratio. And the text you'll see, if you go down, down to a graveyard and look at, look at the graves, you'll see the all uppercase dog Latin dead ledger text. And when you get things in the mail, the addresses or your names, whatever it is, power bills, um, etc., they will be um, constructed in the dead ledger text, which is the same text that sits on tombstones and ledgers at the graveyard. So when you break the seals of those letters, you're, you're tapping into the world of the dead, the underworld. You're breaking the seal of a coffin because they're sealed. And that's, um, that's a conduct. That's what the word conduct. So this is the underworld. It, it operates under a different language, under a different system. And that's why documents have two languages, the, the common law languages of English, which operates in life or living. Then you have the all uppercase symbolic text, which symbols, symbolism. Um, to, to, you're not to worship idols and an idol is a symbol. So when you claim your name, what you thought was your name, written in all uppercase text, you claim not a word, you've claimed a symbol, which is symbolism. It's, it's, it's deceptive. I, idol, you're worshipping idols, and again, you're warned in here, stay away from idols. The V, obviously, is the Vatican. It's the World Bank. And if you are not on the mountains, on the land law, which is the common law of land is mountains and obviously water, the W down here is the water law. So if you're not standing as the creditor, then you have no power to direct the Vatican with the mountain. You're not standing on the, the mountain anymore. You're in the water that's flowing as the currency through the valleys. So while the Vatican can't find you as the mountain, it can control the flow of currency. It becomes the director of the bank, the, the director of your treasury, which is the energy, the, what you do, and your ownership to the land, your mineral and energy wealth. If you are over in the debtor side and not in the creditor side, you are not on the land law, the mountain, which is land. You are not the on the mountains to direct the flow of the water through the valleys, through the valley of death, fear no evil, all that stuff. And this is what it's talking about. This is how deep and and incredible this scam really is. So that's what the Vatican does. It becomes the administrator up here. While you're over here, you can tell the Vatican how to control or where to flow the current. Because the, the, the water on the lands is yours. You own the land, so therefore you are the director of the currencies that flow through the lands. You are on the mountains. If you're not there, you are the water and the, Vat the Vatican, then it becomes the director. It becomes the mountain. <laughs> and it knows that. That's why um, it takes that job because it knows how to 
uh, convert you from the, the creditor into the debtor. It knows how to do that. It's got the ability to trick and deceive you and you'll never know what's going on. And as you can see, it's quite complex. Of course, we go down to the water, which is maritime law. This is common law, the Magna Carta. And I think just after Magna Carta in 12, uh, that was 1215, in 1230, 15 years after Magna Carta, um, Acursius perfected the Corpus Juris, which is the really the, the law of the dead, the law of the sea. There is no footprint in water. So water flows through your hands. It's very hard to keep on holding onto it. Whereas land, you can put a footprint down and there's your mark on land. You have no mark in water. But it flows all the time and the clever people that operate within the maritime, which is um, c commerce and um, merchant, maritime, merchant, merchant ba banking, the bankers, and they then, like the Rothschild banking system, it's almost taken over the whole world, which is uh, all just through trickery and deceit. Could you imagine one day the world waking up and saying, your money is actually just fraud. It is actually only plastic or paper. It doesn't represent anything because it has a grammatical glitch. And as a maximum goes, a fraud negates or vitates a contract. So if there's a fraud on the money, <laughs> then that money is worth nothing. It's a promissory note. And you've got to know, you've got to remember that. A promise to pay is not payment. If you, if you, when you, whatever you buy with their money, it's never, it's never been paid for. So it never really belongs to you. That's why when you're on the side of the road, you say, that's my car, you can't take that. No, you did all the work for it. You were a slave, but you didn't get paid and you didn't pay for that car because you paid it with a note that belongs to the Vatican, the Vatican bankers. And because the note says that it's a promissory note and not the real payment, it's not been paid in full or paid, it's like the, uh, the mail, you know, um, paid in full, whatever it is. Uh, it's not because it's been, you've been handed a trick. You, c you couldn't read the document. So it's, it's not paid. And that's why the police then take your property, walk in and take your home. And it's wrong because you did the work for it, but you agreed to be a servant. You serve and servants are slaves slaves have no rights and slaves can't own property and to be a slave to be a, a debtor over here uh, you you then become a resident as i said before and a resident resides on land he doesn't own so even if you say i'm a resident <laughs> okay well give us your land buddy because <laughs> you just lost it because you told me you're a resident <sighs> see what i mean word word science that's what it is x You'll notice that on a banking contract, they <laughs> put a cross on it and say, here, sign on the cross. And the, the cross is the point where you went from the creditor to the debtor. The minute you signed on the cross, that's the place where you died. Christ died on the cross. So these are, these are the symbolic warnings that has happened now that what really freaks a bank out is if you say to the bank but you already signed it for me because a, a cross is also a signature of an illiterate a cross is a signature so when they sign that they've already signed it they'll be scrambling if you say but you've already signed it you're the one <laughs> liable for the dead They'll be scrambling to get that thing through the, the shredder because they know. It's obviously, it's obvious, isn't it? And if you, even if, oops, even if you look in this big book here, the, um, the Webster's, have a look at the, the meaning of the, the cross. And it just crossed, it means um, death. That's the, the point of death. It's also this, the signature. This cross, the Christian cross, is, uh, is a symbol of death. And this cross is also a cross, symbol of death, but it's also the, um, 
the signature of an illiterate someone on the cross why is interesting because it's like it's it's a three way but it's like an inverted one um hang on, I'll do this It's youth, the symbol of youth. It's the beginning. And it's, I guess it's, it's really God, man, and the, de the debtor. It's, it's an upside down version. And yeah, look, another very interesting thing for the, um, for, for the Israeli, you, you'll see this symbol here. which is really this. Old Testament, New Testament. And when you merge those together, then you get this symbol here, which is um, which is the two trusts, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the New Testament. And that's what youth is. It's the beginning. So we're born into existence, I guess, or born as life, and then, and then we are sacrificed into the world of the dead. It's sort of the, the Christian, we're sacrificed there, but we are, we are looked after in that system until we turn to the age of majority, until we turn 21. And then that's the point after the age of majority, you will become an adult or an adulterer. So that, or you go from the, 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 the debtor back into the creditor as the director of your estate. You are really very, very rich, um, but as a creditor, but as a debtor, you're bankrupt because you own nothing. Um, as a debtor, you own nothing. So the, the, the youth, the why is the symbol of youth young all those sort of words that start with y z is just zion and zion really is the way back and it's funny with that the, with the letter z because if you if you're trying to um nut the system out and you want to go back to man or go back into the to the creditor world uh, a magistrate well it, it's god man, Vatican, uh, creditor, and debtor. So the path of, to degrade, to, the, the, the path into hell is like this. That way there. And to get back to God up here, and man here, the Vatican there, and the creditor, which is sort of Christ, and the debtor. The, the way back to God is this way. You've got to go back the, the same path. And this is only my opinion. You've got to go back to the same path. And that's why you'll notice the Z. You see that? Zion, to find your way back to God. So it's one of the, it was the last symbol that I had trouble working out. I thought, what, what is this? And it's funny too, because when you do turn it up on its side, it becomes neutral and uh, mountain and valley. So, which is the, the two trusts. So it's, 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 you know, it's got some meaning there. Now, Um, S I G N and then S I N. Now, when you use this code, and you can use this with quite a lot of uh, a lot of words, 
just let's do office for a start equity that's an e if that was written as um So we'll, we'll use this code and we'll see what this reads. The equity that is with Christ. Equity is the um, is the is your ownership to the mineral and energy wealth. It's your birthright. It's, it's what equity. So the equity that is with and I'm going backwards because hieroglyphs are usually read from the right to left or b bottom right up to the left. So when you when you construct the word in the hieroglyphic all uppercase text and then for an interesting sake just go through use all of these meanings to see what happens with it going from the left and um, would mean the equity that is with Christ is with the one that is with the fraud that is with the fraud that is with the office so if the office it's telling you that the office relates to a fraud. The equity of Christ is with the one that is with, there's two frauds here and there's that. So what's happening is in the government, the governing system that we're under at the moment, we can only be in the debtor or the creditor. So these, this office, these two here are a fraud. There is no debtor and creditor. There's only the office of, of creditor, the office of debtor but we can only be one, so that's a fraud. So even the very word, see this is where full disclosure starts to come in. Sign is very interesting too, because sign is the, the neutral, which is the, 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 the debtor and the creditor, see? No, sorry, creditor and the debtor, which is the mountain and the sea, is with the governance of the one who is with the snake. Sign, sign language, it's, it's the trick that tricks us into falling into this system. We, th we thought the sign writing or the sign language was proper English to deal with um, common law, but it's not. And when you take out the G, which is the, the debtor and the creditor is under the governance of the one who's with sign, so take the G out and it's just the debtor and creditor is with the one who's with sign. This is with the governance, so sign is the governance of sin sin is just simply sin even the word snake the equity that is with the death with the kill the equity that has been killed is with the administration of both debtor and creditor with the snake with satan satan snake a, a lot of these words in the joker rome that is with the equity, that is with the kill, it's with the office of the joker. <laughs> it's a kill Lucifer that is with Lucifer. Well, that's really dead, isn't it? Is it the one that is with the kill? But this happens with a goat. It's, you know, it, even the word go goat in um, in the Black's Law Dictionary. Uh. Goat in the English dictionary is a goat. It's the real. It's the real thing. <laughs> bah, bah. <laughs> Four legs. And stuff. But in the um, in the Black's Law Dictionary, the goat is the sewer. Which is strange, isn't it? The goat is the sewer, the underworld, the trust of treasury that is with the administration of the office of governance. It's it's the office of the underworld, or, or it's it's uh, it's it's with it's it's with it's with governance. It's with an office, which is this office of governance, and uh, the underworld or the sewer, which is um, also what goat means is is sewer we'll just we'll write that too
Rome, that is with the equity, is with the water, which is maritime law, which is with the water, you see the sewer. Rome, that is with the equity, is with the water, that is with the equity under the snake. It's another reason why I, I've always been, when I was studying or finding this out, I had re I'd realised that the Kennedy kill could have only have been done from the sewer, from the stormwater drain. And I had worked this out long before. That, that it was always the grassy knoll or the buildings or the whatever it was. But the kill shot came from the sewer. I mean, there's a very good um, uh, documentary with an amazing amount of research on that now that they've actually confirmed the, the sewer shot. They've even got his name, but I think it's called 9-11 um, uh, to JFK or JFK to 9-11, a rich man's trick. It's quite a long documentary, but I recommend you watch it because it actually starts to point out the results of this system and what it does and how it gets around killing people without even being um, charged. It's because when you're a debtor, you are the property of the administrator. You're the property of the police. And when they kill you, they're not liable for it because you agreed to hold that account that belonged to them. So you are their property. And when you become the property of the, the, the administrator or the property of the Vatican, or the property of Satan, if you've agreed to be his property, then he can do what he likes with his property. Because when he kills his property and you're attached to it, he will die with it. And that's why it's very important. That's what Christ kept on saying, you know, it's if you eat from the tree of the debtor, the usufruct, you will be caught up. You're dead. You're already dead. Uh, the military is the same. When you enter into the military, if someone gets killed, you get killed in the military, you just died in action. Um, there's no, probably pay your family a few th measly thousand dollars but because you've already agreed to enter into it. When you become, a, you hold a driver license or anything like that, the minute you become a mister or a missus or a miss, they are military accounts. You are in the military. So that, and, that, and they always try and call you mister something or miss whatever, because they, while you are in the military, you are dead, you are deemed dead, and you are deemed the property of the state. The thing is that that state that's running Australia and Queensland, is, a, is not the state of Australia. It is a foreign banking state, as many of you are starting to work this out. And it's, a, it's not our property. It's, but if we become the account holders of that state, of that estate, the minute you become a, a, a legal title holder, it gives them the right to your equity, your ownership of this, because once you've been lost, then they'll take your equity and they'll administer it for you um, but what they really want you is dead. They want you out of the picture. So it's a trust. This is a fraud trust that's been done by this Vatican down here. And when you look at it in this light, you've got to start asking yourself, is it dangerous? Um, you know, was Christ, he, Christ's warnings were very real about this. Same in Adam and Eve's story, the, the, the garden. I mean, you eat from the tree of knowledge and you will surely die. You're dead. And the dead world that Christ has created after this, the Second Testament, is remedy within that dead world. But to get to that remedy, you would um, probably have to You've got to sort of work out what they've done and what they're doing. Um, of course, when I did all this, people still <laughs> reckon I'm crazy. And, you know, in certain ways, I probably, I, I believe them. I'm so crazy that I couldn't stop. I had to find the bottom of this. Uh, in one way, I'm, I'm incredibly glad that I know what I know. But if I had have known what I was going to go through, I would never have had the guts to do what I did, what I had to face, the, the, the brutality of the system, the brutality of the Vatican police, the Unidroid um, 
goon squad that comes out and bashes you. The losing of the cars, you know, the threats that you go through. It's, 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 unbel it's terrorism to the max. And they even called me a terrorist. They advertised me as a terrorist on the news when I went to them and said, you've got a problem. The real terrorists and the real sovereign, so-called sovereign citizens are the police because the police are citizens administering sovereignty. It's them and they're the ones that are murdering more people than anyone. They are administering this system of fraud. This is a fraud. They are, um, they are operating the system uh, by threat and terror and extortion. Um, and, and especially in Queensland, I mean in all states, but in Queensland it is getting really bad. But those people that are involved in it, these politicians and all that, they are so hell-bent on the profit that they make, they can't let it go. But people like the Rothschild system, I mean, and the Rockefeller Foundations and all that, they base their wealth on their promissory notes. And that promissory note basically is a fraud. But the only thing that makes those promissory notes real is that your belief that it exists and your belief that it exists comes from this information being suppressed to you. When you start to see this information, you realise you don't have to buy anything because you are. You, you are the gold. The creditor owns the dominion. That's the birthright. And they must take that birthright from you in order to, to administer your stuff for their benefit and get rid of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's pretty wild. Anyway, uh, that's a rundown of the alphabet in all uppercase and the meanings of those Egyptian hieroglyphs in a hieroglyphic sense.